A soul midwife is essentially an end of life companion. So we sit, literally sit alongside people as they die. We can be there right from diagnosis to death and then beyond with after death care and funeral care as support for the family. We can be as involved or not as people like, and we can do as much or as little as people need. So I'm always guided by the people that contact me, their families, as to what they want. Most people reach out to me because I don't know what they want. Most people actually just need a bit of guidance and support in understanding either what's happening to them or what might what they might go through, the physical process of death as well as navigating all the processes around that. I could be going to doctor's appointments with people. I could be there when they're talking to their solicitor about their lasting power of attorney or their home affairs. I could just be there having a cup of tea and a bit of cake and they're, maybe they don't want to talk about their death, actually. Maybe they just want to have a conversation with somebody that isn't about death, dying and all the, all the difficult stuff. So actually maybe we're chatting about the weather and what soaps on TV. You know, so I, I'm led by people. So if they need the information, I'm very grateful that my world in end of life care for the last 11 years has given me the knowledge and information that I can offer to them. But equally, I can just sit there and just have a cup of tea and a chat if that's what they need. The term doula is derived from a Greek word meaning helper and caregiver. And it's, it's a non-medical um, role. And it's very much around supporting people both emotionally, practically, um, physically and more spiritually around all things living well and dying well. And so a, a doula can be um, there at the beginning of your life limiting illness and, um, and more often at the very, very end of life when it might be um, a very stressful situation um, and people are reaching out for a lot more need and support and therefore a doula is is there to companion, to, to be supportive, um, maybe an advocate, um, and that can be really empowering to provide a lot more knowledge and skill um, and really to face the unknown. And for some people, that unknown and that uncertainty can be really quite frightening and, and um, overwhelming. For a long time, I was an intensive care nurse in the NHS. And I then left the NHS and had my own craniosacral practice for about a decade. But I really missed working with people at the end of life. Um, for me, it's very profound, very sacred, a complete privilege. Um, and so I then started with my soul midwifery um, training and um, then went on to do the full death doula diploma. Um, and it's been a, a wonderful journey of going further into accompanying people in a, in a way that's puts the patient a bit more at the centre of care than we are able to do in the NHS. I've been a qualified nurse for 30 years and the majority of my nursing career has been um, working in palliative care and supporting families and people at the um, from their diagnosis to the end of life and into bereavement in hospitals and communities and particularly working in the community um, for um, a local charity, I found that we just weren't meeting people's needs. So whilst the NHS care was offering a, a, a really wonderful service, we left people sometimes when they still had a lot more hand-holding, they needed more support, more companioning. And I just felt that um, I loved being with people. I had a wealth of expertise around the end of life process particularly. And I really wanted to open this really tricky subject around living well but dying well and um, really trying to bring death in, and normalise death into the community and um, work alongside people in a more of a non-medical capacity. I think the main skill of a death doula or a soul midwife is what we sometimes term exquisite listening. We're really trained in how to hold space be very grounded and really listen to the words and the dynamics that are happening within a family unit. That definitely happens in other care settings as well. But what death doulas and soul midwives are privileged to have is we have a little bit more time. And so we really have the time to sit and probe or understand what is happening with each of the family members and then discuss, make suggestions, signpost for what could happen to support the whole process for the whole family. 
A big part of my role as a soul midwife is to support the family as well as the dying person. And the ways in which I do that are led by them. It might just be my simple presence is enough that they don't feel alone, that they're walking alongside their person who's dying, but they feel safe and held and heard. It might be that actually I'm offering them actual guidance and information about the resources or the help that's around them. I'm just there. And sometimes that's all actually anybody ever needs.